friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a long awaited video, but also it's going to be very, probably very, very long. Be sure to grab two drinks, two snacks, because you guys, right now we're going to be kicking off the half year review of BoxyCharm for 2022. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I feel greasy already. Uh, it's pulling it off. Why are you pulling it off? What's happening? about? And as you can see, I am starting this video with makeup on. Again, I'm wearing makeup because, um, well, I had to do something because the boxes are pretty skimp on makeup this month. Yeah, she's definitely dusting off here. Oh, okay. Definitely still see the pigment though. For being a neutral shade, this is already pulling kind of yellow. This is neutral? These are actually spreading really nicely. It's rougher than I thought it would be compared to everything else. Oh my gosh. What is this, sugar? Like this looks extreme. So I kind of realized as this year has been a little different for me, as many of you may know, and if you don't, if you mostly tune into these BoxyCharm videos and this is the first one you're seeing in a while, my husband and I moved out of our tiny house. I have a full video, a couple of different videos on it. I'll be linking them in the video here. And honestly, things have gotten a little crazy. So I haven't done my normal quarterly reviews, but then as I was thinking about it, when I was able to potentially do it, I was like, is this really worth the, the time? Is this really worth what we've got left here? Because, oh, it's been a little bit of a different, well, it's been an ongoing different time for BoxyCharm. So I really felt like once I got to this point in the year, I was like, now I feel like I could do this video, but there's honestly not a ton left. I technically have seven months worth of BoxyCharm products in front of me. And we're not just talking PR, we're talking about the things I pay for too. So I have multiple boxes for every single month, as many of you guys know. So I'm always gonna have a PR box here to compare to a paid for at minimum. And in the beginning of the year, we were still getting premium and things like that but I went down to paying for one base box a month just because I couldn't really justify the costs anymore. And BoxyCharm really started pulling back on what they're sharing with content creators, or at least maybe smaller ones like myself. So you guys, we have a decent amount to go through. Normally at this point, I'd be saying a lot, but it's really more of a decent amount. So grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your pineapple, get comfy because we are gonna be going back all the way to January. Cheers! I really thought I was gonna need the whole desk for this, um, but I didn't. I needed maybe three-fourths of the desk, but usually I need way more room than this, so let me come down here to January. And I'll tell you, in January, I was still getting how many boxes? I still had three boxes to go through, so the fact that some of these months are still pretty light, that's a little bit of a shock. Also, some things are still in boxes. <laughs> Maybe less of a shock there, maybe less. My purpose for these types of overviews, it's pretty much more what do I still have? What am I reaching for? What maybe have I forgotten about that I need to reintroduce to me for the day-to-day -day use? But also, what should I just consider decluttering? And I'll be honest, I keep all of the cards throughout the year to keep notes on, to know what came when, because it gets a little confusing on this end. And honestly, I know I was writing decluttered, question mark, should I declutter? Like some things in here are just not really jiving with me. Now, I'll keep in mind, I don't keep anything that's not cruelty free. So there will be things throughout this year that I'm not gonna touch on because I've already gifted them away. Or if I got duplicates of things, I've also given those away as well. So let's just dive into this from the top and I can tell you I forgot about things. I forgot about quite a bit. Starting with a product I definitely did not forget about. A lot of you guys know I fell in love with the Getaway palette from Wander Beauty. So when we got another Wander Beauty palette, so many of you guys were tagging me in the sneak peeks going, girl, girl, here's another one. This is the Wander Beauty Wondrous Escape eyeshadow palette. The retail value on this is $42. And I did end up getting two in for some reason. And I think my paid for box and PR, I did gift one away, but I did have a struggle with it because I was like, wait, I hit so much pan so fast on the getaway palette that I loved from them. I was like, maybe I should hang on to this second one. 
but I did end up giving it away. But this is still really quality. I tend to forget about Wander Beauty when it comes to maybe my own purchases. So that's why I love getting these in subscription boxes to one, remind me to get a great value in a base box. Was this a base box? Yeah, I believe this was a base box. So that's awesome. It's got a lot of beautiful neutral colors, a lot of gold tones. We've got that nice pop of blue that's starting to make its rounds back into the eye looks for the season. And I just think this is so pretty. But also, I like the formula. That is super important because sometimes a neutral palette like this can be maybe a little underwhelming. But if they have a formula that is going to perform well, make your morning routine faster but beautiful, that is super important to me, especially for like the babes in the audience that I know are trying to juggle a bunch of things in the morning. Kids, career, trying to do your morning workouts, doing your yoga meditation, whatever you're doing, you wanna be able to prioritize yourself a little bit, but you still wanna look good throughout the day because that's also prioritizing yourself. I love when a formula can be fast and easy and beautiful, and I think this does that just as well. I haven't reached into this a lot lately, but this is definitely making me want to pull this back out. It's not a dupe for the Getaway palette, but it is a very good palette that I've enjoyed. Now for a palette that I had in my declutter pile, and I just did a video last upload on second chances. So some things in here I am going to have just given a second chance to because this was in my declutter pile. And now it's back in the rotation a little bit. Let me explain. This came, I think, in a premium box too. This is the Aether Beauty Desert Sunset Palette. Now the retail value on this is $48 and it was a new launch when we received it. So I have a few issues, this being one of them. The packaging is super complicated sometimes to close when you're in a rush or you're trying to get things in the drawer. Is that persnickety and not really about the makeup, but the component? Yes, but does that still sometimes be a factor for us? Yeah, it is. So I thought it was worth mentioning. Also, the pans really were bugging people, especially for those of us that like to use our finger to go into shimmers. Sometimes you can't get a full like finger dip to put it across the lid. So this had some like aesthetic drawbacks, but it wasn't anything that we were going to be like totally discounting it for. I just found I wasn't reaching for it. And I think some of the shades just weren't working for me very well, but I just did a second chance video. If you missed it, I'm gonna link it above. Go check it out because some things shocked me, some things got decluttered on camera, and I was trying to do it to plan ahead for this video. And this shade right here, it's one that I've liked before and I think it really saved the look. Also, some other things in here really stood out to me. So it's not decluttered yet, but it's one of those borderline, like I'm gonna put you on deck, I'm gonna try you a little bit more, and if, 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 I find I like you, I'll put you back in the rotation and you'll probably learn more about that either in an upcoming, you know, where are they now BoxyCharm video or a faves and fails potentially. I love to keep you updated every month with those type of videos. But this has actually been saved because of the second chance video. I was ready to declutter it though because some of the other shades were just not working for me. And also I feel like I have to use another palette to work with this. I can't get a full look out of it for what I like to do. But for now, I'm gonna be using her for a little bit longer. Now something I thought I decluttered already and then I found it trying to pull things out for this video. I was like, oh, I remember saying I was gonna try you more and then didn't and then rediscovered you in my drawer and then moved you around and I thought I decluttered it. But who still uses a cream contour palette on the daily? There is zero judgment in this community. No worries there. Just let us know because if you still love a good die hard cream contour moment, how often do you do it, just out of curiosity? And do you have any tips for this? Because I think this is on my personal chopping block. This is the Aesthetica Cream Contour Kit for $40. Now, I was able to make a pretty decent look with this in the beginning of the year. I actually also like this brand and have used it for years. However, Oily Skin Girl with Bossy Pores, usually cream products don't jive with my skin type in general. So if I can find something that works, it's kind of like, a, oh, that's a bonus, but I'm never gonna organically reach for something like that. I'm not gonna think first thing in the morning, this is what I want when I have powder products that work better for my skin type and overall look throughout the day. You know what I mean? So I was able to make a good look with this and I was kind of like, you know, getting my feet wet with trying to remember how to use creams. And I was like, oh, well, this will be a great learning tool to have. And then she got put into a drawer and put away. And honestly, 
we've been in such a more basic makeup vibe the past few years. This felt like this could have come out five years ago and then everybody would have been like eek excited. But at the time that this has come out, and of course with subscription boxes, that's kind of how that rolls. We get the stuff a couple years after it's released. It, this just doesn't feel like something a lot of us are utilizing right now. It's not the style of makeup. A lot of us either are still working from home or we just don't want to use that extra time. Also, we've been doing a little bit more of a fresh face look. So tell me, do you still love to do this? Is it your jam? Do you only use it for maybe nose contour or maybe just the cheeks? Tell me how you like to use this because honestly, I think with my skin type, this is probably going to get decluttered. But she's still here because I forgot about her. I forgot about her. I thought I decluttered this. I think I got two this month. I get so much from this brand and honestly, this brand tends to break me out and there'll be an occasional piece that doesn't make me break out or that I like, but it's so rare. I usually discount this product in my mind pretty quickly, honestly. This is the Earth Harbor Naturals Nymph Nectar Super Fruit Radiance Balm for $38. That's nearly 40 bucks and it's not a huge tub of product, but I think what made me want to keep this product was it that it was like a glow that I thought I'd like in the summer maybe? It's supposed to help you achieve, yeah, your dewiest, bounciest skin yet. Ah, but I've definitely, it's still in box. I've not used it yet, but also it's not even just, you know, it's a little bit of an attest to the fact that I know this brand doesn't work super great for my skin, but I was willing to try it. But also, it just kind of also leans into something that I definitely felt going through these collections this year. I'm still on skincare overload from last year or the previous or, you know, all of the stockpiles of things that we have received from subscription boxes. So that's also kind of been where it's like, ooh, skincare isn't something you can do. Like I can do two, three different eyeshadows on my lids. I did that today. I've done that for years. You can't really do that when it comes to skincare. So things will tend to age out, especially if you open them. That's why I haven't opened this yet. So that you may see reoccurring in here because at least with makeup, we can try a different lipstick or combine things. Skincare, especially with my sensitive skin, uh, that sounds like a breakout disaster for me. Speaking of, let's talk about another skincare piece that I did try and I still have, but I truly, truly, forgot I had, so I'll have to remind myself what I think of it. This is the Juice Beauty Bamboo Pore Refining Mask for $36. I even wrote on the card when I first was going through this and looking through my collection, I wrote, gave it away. Well, I, I still have it, so clearly I didn't give it away. I actually found it in my bathroom closet because it was something that we had kept, used. I'm assuming Adam and I both used it because there's a good amount out of the jar and we did move it here, so that means we did like it at some point, but honestly, I have so much skincare and so many other masks and different types of things, it's not top of mind right now. Like, I can't truly think, why do I still have it? But it does make me curious to rediscover it and maybe put it in an upcoming rotation. But if I can't remember and it's not something I've been loving, that tells you stuff too. So I felt like it was important to mention. $36 value, that's cha-ching, cha-ching. And I do have other things from Juice Beauty that I love. So that could also lean into why I still have it to be like, oh, I know this is a brand that I have liked before. That's another piece. So I'm probably gonna rediscover this soon, but if you still have this or you used it all up, tell us, tell us what you thought because I need a reminder. I need a reminder. Okay, I have, I got this in two boxes and I know I gave one away and I'll be honest, I have used this, I would say a decent amount, but is it gonna look like I've used it? No, why? Because this might be the longest lip liner stick you've ever seen in your entire life. And it came with a sharpener that I think kind of sucks. But this is the Dragon Beauty Lip Job Liner. It is a brown tone. It is something that I have used for some of my neutral lips. I tend to use more of a brown tone like this to kind of draw around the perimeter of my lips just to kind of give that bigger pout look and then do a lipstick and then a gloss, all the things. This isn't my favorite lip liner by any stretch of the imagination. I really thought I was gonna declutter it simply because the size is so large, I wasn't gonna be able to like wanna store this. But I did start leaving some of my more frequently used liners up on my vanity. So it has lived up there and I would grab it from time to time. Is it my favorite creamiest formula? No. Do I like a pencil lip liner? No, but does it get the job done when I'm in a rush? Yes, and it's pretty opaque, pretty well lasting. So it's still kind of hung around, not my favorite though. 
and their little sharpener that came with it is kind of nice. I was surprised I still have it, but it is kind of crappy. I definitely have a better one, but this is kind of nice to take for travel, I will say. And this is an $18 value. All right, let's talk about something that I really would have loved five years ago, four years ago even, but I like this brand. I like this product style in theory. I used to love it, but it's not where makeup is right now. It's not where my skin is right now. So let's talk about the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Palette. This is a really pretty palette and it has really pretty highlighters in it. I mean, these are super soft, super buttery, and you I love when we have some shade options. I really do because I feel like then it's a little bit more customizable for whoever receives the product. But as a lot of us know, for some reason, it's not that I don't use a highlighter. I actually have on a highlighter today, but we're kind of going less to this like blingy 2017 highlighter, right? Um, you can use this on your eyes, inner corners. I feel like, I don't know, it just didn't really stand out to me as something I loved. And now that I'm seeing it even swatched on my arm, on my skin tone, I'm not very impressed. I don't know why because this feels really nice and maybe it's just because it's going to be a more subtle highlight and that is where we are more but i guess i just kind of assumed this was a much more highlighter palette vibe but i mean you can see them right here oh now i can see them in the viewfinder when i move my arm they are well they actually are blingy now did i did build them up so this just is not been something I've thought to reach for. I've been reaching for things that I got last year that are highlighters, but less palettes. Maybe that's the thing. Palettes were such a 2017 vibe and these are pretty blingy that I wouldn't think to maybe use these all the time. So these have fallen off my radar, not because I don't love cover effects, not because I don't love highlighters. It just seems like right now we're in a different phase of makeup. So I am going to keep these. I am going to have them on deck because we all know it's rotating. Like I just said, you're starting to see pops of blue back in eye looks again, which was a 2018, a little bit of 2017 look. So you just never know. And these are really good quality. I just keep forgetting about them. And a $42 value that is nice to get in a boxy charm. So I'm a little sad that it's just something though, that it's not something we're kind of reaching for at the moment. Okay, so I had to look this product up. This is the LYS Beauty Secure Skin Gripping Serum Primer for $20. I did try this. I had to look up what it looked like. I'll insert a picture here, but that got decluttered. I think that was in an earlier this year declutter for me. It was not working with my oily, big poured, combo-y like skin. It just really wasn't working with me. And I have a lot of primers. So it's one of those things where I was happy to gift it away to somebody because I have enough in my collection. But that one was a big bad bummer for me. I keep wanting to love stuff from that brand, but I haven't really received a lot that I have been loving from that brand, LYS. So tell me what are some of your favorites from that brand so maybe I can seek them out and buy them myself. There's another lip liner in here that I just used in my second chance video. I do really love this. I've been introduced more this year to this brand and I have not been upset about it at all. And this isn't even usually the type of liner I enjoy, but this is the Persona Cosmetics lip liner for $14. This one is in a really nice shade that I think could go a little bit more neutral toned, a little bit more berry toned. It's been a very easy lip liner to use. I even like the fact it is looking a little messy, but even though it's a pencil, it is super creamy. And look, it's not too far off from the other one from Dragon Beauty, but I tend to reach for this one more because it has a little bit more creaminess. It also has a little bit more of a berry undertone. So even if I just put a gloss on top of it, it just kind of maybe looks a little bit more like my natural lips. I have learned to really love the Persona Cosmetics line and I'm really glad to have received more of their products this year. I've been liking them. Something else I do not have anymore is the Contact Skin Matte Lipstick. I had to look that up. I was like, did I get that? I was like, yes, I think I tried it and I'm pretty sure it got the ax early, but it was back in January. So I can't really remember all the details. Uh, the Laura Geller Speckle Skin Perfecting Primer Hydrate, not my skin type, not great for me. I have a lot of primers, like I just said. So that one also got taken out of the beauty space pretty quickly. And I like Laura Geller. It just wasn't my jam. Oh, I do still have something from a brand I like, but again, skincare overload. I need to give this attention when I'm used up some more things that I've already got. I believe I asked for this as well. This is the Dermalect Cosmeceuticals Revitalize Professional Eyelid Dark Circle Corrector for $59. I have received great products from Dermalect 
from BoxyCharm and I've actually repurchased this one on my own. Really love it, which is why when I saw this was going around, I was like, yeah, I want it. I just have so many other open things for eyes right now that I don't want to use something, open something and waste it. Again, skincare overload, Boxy. This is why we've been saying for what, two years now? Give us more makeup. Makeup we can mix and match with. It's a little bit easier with a longer shelf life. I was actually surprised by how much I still had from January because I kept finding things, but I do believe that is everything for the month of January that I still have. So let's move on to February. Oh Lord, the editing on this is gonna suck. Oh, one more thing, almost forgot. I just tried it in my second chance video. So how did I forget about the Bare Minerals Original Translucent Mineral Powder. I was so glad I did that second chance video because I knew I liked Bare Minerals, but honestly, my powder game is really strong right now. I keep buying stuff on my own, getting them in subscription boxes because I do love a good powder. And this is what set down my face today and in my second chance video. It is a very soft powder that really complements whatever you have underneath it. It isn't moving anything and it still gives your skin like this. I don't want to say if you have some dew to your skin, it will allow that to show through, but it still holds everything together so well. I forgot how much I do like bare minerals. So really glad to have received this in my boxy charm. Okay, now I'm pulling out the February cards. And even though there are three here in front of me, I am pretty sure this is a light month of what is left. Yeah. And this is also the um, pile that I have the a, a decent amount that I'm ready to declutter and get rid of. So it's about to get thinner in here. First thing on top is something that I tried to use in my second chance video and honestly I couldn't find a use for it. I, again, if this was five years ago, six years ago, I would have been so excited for this Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm All Over Diamond Veil for $39. I don't even know if it was created five, six years ago, but that for me is when this type of makeup was at its peak, maybe four years ago, but it is super pretty. This is one of those products that is so beautiful. It isn't even as super as opaque as you think it will be. It's just like, it makes it look like your skin itself is shimmer. And then when you apply it, it really blings out. It's not even too bad on textured skin, but because I do have textured skin, obviously I'm top of mind about it, but I'm even looking at my finger now and all I see is a bunch of glitter flecks. It does almost look wet still though, which is super fascinating. It's a cool formula, but it's like a 2016, 2017 type of formula that I would have loved that YouTube would have been raving about. But now I have like no use for something like this. And I even put it on my collarbones the other day, not today. And I felt like when I was seeing myself in the mirror or in the viewfinder, it just looked like I could see glitter on my body. And I was like, that's not the look I'm going for. I want a dewy wet look, not a glitter bomb look, which is kind of the name of it, but not it's the diamond bomb, but it, it kind of has a little bit more of a glitter bomb vibe to it. I really think I'm getting close to decluttering this simply because I'm just storing it. I'm not using it. Somebody else may love this and I clearly have highlighters that I'm not using. I just showed you a, you know, little palette I have. I do think this formula is really cool and maybe if it wasn't this white shade, maybe there are other shades, like something a little bit more neutral that would go with my body, but the glitter kind of, <clears throat> kind of stops me, honestly. Do you still have this? Do you love it? How do you like to use it? Maybe I just need more tips on where to put this. Where do I put this? Where do I put this? Trash? On my face? On my body? Tell me. This is the Complex Culture Future So Bright palette that we got in a boxy charm, even though Complex Culture, as many of us know, is an Ipsy brand. By now, all of us know Ipsy bought boxy charm and ruined the box. I didn't say that. You can't prove it did. Don't rewind. This is a $30 value, and honestly, I'm ready to declutter this. That's the note I had on here. I don't think these shades are my favorite formula. Uh, the shimmers are okay. I used, I think, this dark shade recently on the outer corner and it was okay, but the color story is just not my jam. I definitely can't get a full look out of this with looks I like to create, and I just don't think the formula is there. It's not my jam. I think this is going to be decluttered pretty soon. I ended up getting two of these and sending one of these to a girlfriend who I knew would love it. I forgot about this till I started this video, so that's another reason I love doing these, to remind you and me of the stuff I do like to do makeup and take off makeup. 
This is the Vike Beauty Makeup Melt for $24. This was a new brand to Boxy when we received it back in February. And I was just like, when you spray this on your face, I hope people don't get it confused with like a setting spray because this is going to take it off and this is going to make it stay. Uh, but this is actually a really good product to use to get off, you know, the liners, the red lips, and just the day-to-day -day makeup too, even if you're a neutral babe as well. Kind of forgot about this through the move, so so glad to have rediscovered it. I got rid of the Moonlit Makeup Prime for the night. That was $18. I think I tried that on camera and it was just gh. It was nasty and a lot of people were, I think, were even saying they got some expired product, I think. Not good. Even for 18 bucks, uh, it was a new launch. No, it's gone. The Pretty Vulgar Cosmetics Lovebirds Lip Duo for $30. I even wrote on here, didn't like Decluttered. It was red and it was clear. And I ended up getting two that month. And I just remember being like, all right, I'll try it. This isn't what I want to wear. I, it was such a vibrant red that I was like, this just isn't my jam of colors. But I want to try the formula. Let you guys know. I took one for the team. I, I didn't care for it. I didn't care for it. It's gone. The OPV Beauty Loose Setting Powder. I thought I still had that because like I mentioned, my powder game is strong. But as I was going through it, I was like, wait, I've had so many powders. I think this is the one that on my skin type just wasn't performing as smoothly. It didn't make my skin look smooth. It had a little bit of texture. So that I did try, but it is gone now. I forgot about this, but again, ugh, five, six years ago would have been awesome. Let's talk about the Ace Beauté Glow Essentials Highlighter Palette. It's the highlighter palette, I think, for me. I think that's why I have to put it in a separate spot than where I put my normal highlighters, because usually I'm a single girl. I have, um, well, not single, I'm married, but you know what I'm saying. I prefer the singles, and I have a row of them that all fit really nicely in my organizational like drawer here, and this... I don't have room for it, so it's kind of laying flat where I keep my palettes and I forget about it. So that's why I think palettes aren't working for me anymore for storage purposes. Um, but also, I think these are beautiful. I love the formula. Now these don't feel maybe as smooth. They have a little bit of grip to them, I would say. But I could see these looking really nice on the body too. Oh wow, that white is like how you doing? Goodness gracious. Whoo! This warm shade here though for like warming, juicing up the body. So pretty. Yeah, I think these are really like, again, we're looking at some bling. This is only one coat because I said it's got a little bit of grip to it when you put it on your fingers. So when it's going on your skin, like, oh my gosh, this pink, purple, white thing here, I can see that coming. This is the shade Radiant. Holy cow. Then we've got some gold here. This is actually really pretty. These are really nice. That's why I haven't decluttered them because I think they're quality. I just forget about them because they're a palette format. But this would be really nice, like, you know, on the collarbones, on the shoulders, just up here at the peak. Should we just do a little? Maybe we'll come up here into glowing. Should we do a little bit up here? I do already have on a little bit of my Natasha that I love, but I could see this looking pretty nice. I like that it doesn't grab to texture and I'm not seeing a ton of it. Ooh, I just built it up a little too much there, but it's not really gripping to my texture, which I appreciate. I'm gonna take a bronzer brush and just kind of like fluff it around to make it blend a little bit more. I like it, I do. I just think this style of makeup isn't as top of mind right now, but you know, what's old is new again. That could totally change and I'm definitely not getting rid of them. I mean, look at this, that's all, Oof, girl. I believe I also had a Yensa Tone Up Primer Essential Glow. That was not good for my personal skin type. I have a ton of primers. That one I decluttered. The Alley Oop Multitasker 4-in-1 Makeup Brush. I really felt like that was very gimmicky. I felt like it wasn't very helpful even if I wanted to travel. I have smaller brushes that I like to travel with over something like that. It just wasn't my jam personally. I got two of them and I decluttered both of them. Those were 28 bucks too. And I just kind of felt like that was a little much for what the product felt like in my hand. Um, I recently got something in July's box that I got in a PR box, the Saturday Skin Vitamin C Bright Eye Cream. I did gift that away then, which is why I was kind of surprised I saw it again this month. So we'll get there. I haven't, spoiler alert, haven't tried it yet, but I kind of thought that was interesting. And that's about everything for February. Let's move on to March. Now this month I had four boxes because I had my paid for boxes PR and it was a luxe month. So let's start with something. Oh my gosh. So I forgot I owned this again. It's kind of like that palette situation. I forgot I had it. I literally was like, 
what did I do with this? Did I lose this in the move? I don't think I would have gotten rid of this brand, but it was a face palette. So I had to do a lot of digging and then I found it underneath either that highlighter palette or some other face palette. I know you guys sass me a lot about this because I'm always telling you I'm not a blush girl, but then I'll put on a decent amount of blush. But it really is like the last thing I think of to use sometimes. So if it's out of sight, out of mind, when it's not as easy to use. This is the Ofra Cosmetics Charm Your Cheeks Mini, Bl Mini Mix Blush Palette. And the value on this is $39. I think the packaging for me is the issue. And it's not just with this blush though. So for those of you that are like, Nicole, stop saying you're not a blush girl. I've seen you, I know better. Um, also, I have other Ofra palettes that are like the highlighter palettes. Let me show you. He mixed Good To Go palette, loved it. Even called it a favorite at one point, forget about it. The On The Glow palette, really big and beautiful. Great value in here. I forget about these a lot because I don't reach for a lot of face palettes. I'm noticing just organically about myself. It's not intentional. I just don't think of them as much as I do like, I'll use this blush, oh, and today I'm gonna use it with that highlighter that are singles, and then I'm gonna move on to this. You know what I'm saying? I feel like even if I were to reorganize my drawers, which is something I've been thinking about doing, I still just don't organically think of palettes anymore like I did back in like 2018. They are nice blushes. Um, some of them are a little bit deeper than I would probably reach for, like a little bit more vibranty pink, and I tend to go a little bit more into this realm over here, maybe this realm, because they're a little bit more skin tone friendly for me. Ooh, this one is really pretty. That one's pretty pink, actually. So that's why I'm just kind of like, I think I'd go more towards that. So it's kind of like, I have to seek it out. So still like the formula and stuff, just forget about her. So this is the second time I've received this exact product, but Adam really liked it. So it wasn't a too big of a deal. I'm just, again, seeing some repeats. This is the Aceology Detoxifying Treatment Mask for $69. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Is it really worth that much? I don't know. I do love that it's cruelty-free. Adam really liked it. I've used it in the past. I think we used up the other one, maybe, unless this is still the first one. I haven't done that deep of digging, honestly, with all the products, but I, Adam does like it. So, you know, it is still a win here in our house. And there's a couple other things that I had to sneak out of the Adam section of our bathroom that I'm gonna be telling you about, but I have to put them back like immediately, probably exactly where they go, where he's gonna be like, what'd you do with my favorite blah, blah, blah. Cause you know, some things are definitely Adam approved and he will definitely tell me when he likes and hates things. Apparently back to back, I got the Earth Harbor Naturals Nymph Nectar Super Fruit Radiance Balm, and I have written next to it repeat around, oh my gosh, another Vike Beauty? Do I have the month wrong for this? No, I don't, it's the other month. So we really did get some of these things back to back months. No wonder I had to gift away so much and some of these months are lighter than others. If we got the same thing two months in a row, am I reading this right? Y'all, I'm questioning my sanity, but I did get this, I got like the Vike Beauty, in this month, and then again, the next month. I was literally sitting here questioning my sanity if I reorganized things wrong on my desk. But no, BoxyCharm's just trying to make me slowly go insane. That's gaslighting, I cannot today. Something else that I have from Boxy from March? March, yeah, we're in March now. And I have used up most of this product is a hair product. This is the Style Dry Coconut and Fig Hair Mask for $16.95. I liked this. I like hair masks because your girl has curly hair. I tend to get the little knots underneath. So I, I like a hair mask to help kind of like release things, kind of get all the kinks out and then start fresh. So I like that. Something I liked that month, but I have not really retried again because of skincare overload. I did put this in my drawer trying to remind myself that so many of you guys said that this was a great brand and it worked great for your skin. I did a little bit of testing for the video but I have other things that I don't want to go bad first. This is the Key Soul Care Skin Transformation Cream Fragrance Free with Bok Chul, $30 brand new to Boxy skincare. This is a fragrance free hydrating moisturizer. I do not add this into my daily routine yet. I have so many moisturizers, I have so many things, and I have oily skin. Again, can't double up on the skincare. So many of you guys said this was great though, so I do still have it, but it's not in my routine yet. Okay, skincare overload. Um, the new Co, the pill all-in-one serum 
for $85. I did give that one away. I can't remember if that one was cruelty free or not, but again, I, I have so much to go through. I could not just keep all the skincare. I really want BoxyCharm to get back to being makeup. Ciate London Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. Definitely not for my skin type. Definitely gifted that one away to a friend. All right, you remember when I just told you Adam will tell you when he loves something and he'll also tell you when he hates something. Be prepared for some Adam sass. So the Aromatherapy Associates De-Stress Muscle Gel for $40. That is not in our house anymore. Adam tried it. He likes to do kettlebells and things like that. And I said, hey, this is a great product maybe for you to try at the end of a busy work day or after some workouts. And he called it crap. He said that it didn't work. He couldn't feel anything because you were supposed to feel like a warming ginger. It's a perfect antidote to an intense workout or a demanding day. And he tried it several times. It was like, there's literally nothing. It's a lotion. This is this is crap. This is bad marketing. So he needed it out of the house because he was mad at it. So um, that was a big Adam fail. Rare Beauty. Rare Beauty is something I'm seeing a lot this year in my boxes. And as I'm discovering more from her line, I'm not sure that her celebrity brand is necessarily targeted for my style of makeup or skin, but I can really appreciate that she's creating things that are quality at a decent price point. I just retried this in my second chance video and I do have this on today as well because of that. This is the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist Illuminating Primer for $26. Now you guys have heard me over and over again say, okay, I got rid of this primer, got rid of that primer, not for my skin, not for my skin. I did give this a try, even though it said it was an illuminating primer. See, I do try some things. I just can't try everything sometimes, especially if, with my sensitive skin. And this actually did not detract. It didn't make me look oily. It didn't make me look greasy. Today I have it on with also a pore filling primer because it definitely didn't fill the pores though. It's probably why I haven't used this a bunch. It's not doing the all over effect. I'll have to double up with this with something else, but it is nice. And the value being $26, I can appreciate. It's not $47, you know what I mean? So I do appreciate that. I got this twice this month and they're really good. These are the Luxie Florals brush. These were actually that beautiful mint shade and they came with this really cute, you know, little carrier. I'm always gonna love a Luxie brush. I think they're amazing. They're all dirty, so that tells you I still do use them. I used some this morning on today's eye look with some of the shadows that are in this collection that I'm gonna be talking about even in this month. So those are a win. No need to get too deep into those other than they are $40, cha-ching, cha-ching, but I do love Luxie brushes and think they're high quality. Something I have on today and I did test again in that second chance video is something I forgot about. This is the Lauren Conrad liquid eyeliner for $20. This is new to boxy. I like it a lot. I like that it is a felt tip. I tend to gravitate to those. I also like that it is a more narrow tip. So that way, like this morning when I was using this for today's eye look, I could go in a little bit more detailed into the crevices. And I actually used this to solve the solution to something else I used in the last video that it was just like making the other eyeliner was patchy, even though it was a thicker, bolder line, it was patchy and this fixed it. So I'm pretty pleased with this and it goes off pretty easily too. I see that there are some Give Them Lala soothing skin sheet masks that we got in March in the Lux that I ended up getting in the base in like June. I'll get to that. I think again, if they're recycling products like that from a Lux to a base a couple months later, that's not a good sign. Something that I love and was really grateful to get was another Juice Beauty product. This is the Stem Cellular Anti-Wrinkle Retinol Overnight Serum for $72. This is a product Adam and I both have enjoyed to use at the end of the day before bed, kind of put this on for a little retinol self-care really good for the skin. If you don't use retinols a ton though, start lightly and build up to these because they can be pretty powerful. This is still so cute to me. This is the packaging for Frank Body Perky Sculpting Body Hydrator for $19.95. I said it was fun. I haven't really used it in a while. Um, I think it's like a little coffee cup and got a little butt on it. It's just so cute. And it says, butt first coffee on the back of it. And I think this cream smells like coffee. Yeah, because what it does is it's got caffeine in it to, you know, be good for sculpting of the body, the booty. 
and I really liked it. I really did. I should pull this back out and I was glad I still had it. Got rid of a Complex Culture Beauty Filter Out Daily Blue Light Defense Mist. Y'all, we've talked about this. The blue light filter mists don't do anything. It's all marketing and a gimmick and the fact that Complex Culture, Ipsy, uh, sent that out. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a good look. Not a good look. And my girl Natasha showed up in the month of March and I miss her. I haven't seen her in a while in our boxes, have we? At least I haven't. I got the Cupid eyeshadow palette. Now online, the pictures looked different than this does in person. This actually pulls more purple, gray, red, burgundy toned, at least on my skin. And I thought from the pictures that it was gonna be more of a nude neutral palette. I do have on this beautiful shade today and this beautiful shade on my lid. This is in the crease and this is in my lid right now, along with one other thing. I think just one other palette. Like I said, I had multiple on today and I think they blend gorgeously. I think they're really nice and stunning. I don't tend to lean into purples. So when this was coming out a little bit more purple toned, I was like, darn it, but it's still a really good palette. I still have this in my rotation of different Natasha palettes that are the smaller sizes and I think the quality is super good. Love getting Natasha in the box and her value is $48. I also discovered Lawless this month and I loved it. This is the Lawless Beauty Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Soothing Gloss. This has a huge doe foot. I really, really liked this. I think it does give you some tingling effects, but nothing overwhelming. I have on another gloss, but I'm going to put this on too because I like it. It's a very, it's a little bit thicker but it's not like goopy on the lips. It definitely kind of thins out, kind of gets into your lips to soothe out the lines like it says, and just be very juicy. It's great for summer when you're doing that summer glow. 25 bucks is a lot for a gloss, so I love getting that in a subscription box. Okay, y'all, I feel like this was a lot for this month, and these are why the videos tend to be a little bit longer sometimes, but I think that is everything. Now we're gonna move further into spring and jump into the April box. Okay, and I'm seeing just from a glance here, there are things that I tried in that second chance video. There are things that I've been trying on going and some stuff I forgot about. So some stuff's definitely getting decluttered and some stuff is definitely staying. April was a spring revival and I really only had two boxes, my PR and my base. So less to go through, but a decent amount that's still here. All right, y'all saw me try this several times on camera now and I go, from normal to yellow to oompa loompa to back to normal with a little bit of oxidization when I use this Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation. I don't understand it. This is a $38 foundation and I was so hyped to try it. The color I have here is 240N and this sucker changes color on me as you have seen several times. Again, check out the last video if you have not because I did this in April as well and we were all like, what? And then I tried it again and I'm just like, well, how does this keep happening? How does this keep happening that it looks so yellow toned? But then it neutralizes itself. It's a little too warm still for my skin color, but also you go through a roller coaster of emotions and journey with this makeup and when you don't have that much time in the morning to see what do you have to do to balance it potentially out, it's kind of a little too much work, a little too much effort. And I think we're all just looking for a little bit more simplistic makeup that makes us look pretty without a lot of effort. So this I'm pretty sure is going to be getting decluttered. Maybe I can find a friend that it would match better, but I'm worried it's going to make her look yellow too. Like, I don't know what to do with this. What did you do with this? Did, you, did it do this to you? Did you see what it did to me? Did it do it to you? This is a product I had never ever heard of, but we have nearly finished this up. Look how crumpled this bottle looks. This is the Sila by Celine Glacier Clay Cleanser for $45. This was new to Boxy. And as you can see, we are nearly done with it now. Is it because it's our favorite cleanser? No. Is it because we have started to run through the cleansers because we got so many cleansers for a while, the same as we were getting so many skincare items. So we're just trying to go through things. Adam's not a huge fan of this. I tend to use it just to like wash off my face at the end of the day, whether I have makeup on or not. So is it okay? Yeah. Is it worth $45 and would I repurchase it for $45? No, no, I wouldn't. Personal thoughts. Definitely started seeing some item beauty that I had known to be going around in Ipsy. So I guess I shouldn't have been shocked to see it in Boxy, but I was for some reason. And that is the Addison Ray. I think she's a TikToker. I know my, my 30 something is showing, but I think she's a TikToker. Um, I got her lash snack 
lengthening mascara decluttered that because it did not work for me i did not like it um and then i also got the lucky chick liquid shadow i had this in my second chance to use but I had so many shadows that I was focusing on I did not do this but I've not played with it um, it's a rose gold color that looks a little bit more purple toned if it's still in my collection and I didn't get rid of it right away I'm gonna assume it was like okay ish it kind of reminds me of a cover FX one I had a long time ago I just don't gravitate to these or think to use them honestly oh this is also when I got that Persona Cosmetics 24 hour waterproof liner for $14. I fell in love with this. I also reused it in my last video and got a little disappointed in it because I actually like to use this in the waterline up under the lashes, which I have never done until this pencil because everything else I've ever tried transfers down below, makes me look like I'm a crying mess. I'm the girl in the bathroom when I'm 20 something years old crying over a boyfriend or something. That's what all the other liners always made me look like. This one, beautiful, lasted. This time around though, it did kind of transfer. It could be because it's been really hot here and I did go outside, but I don't know. I think I'm still gonna hang on to this. Still really impressed with the Persona formula with their pencils. I'm still loving them. I also still have, but I have not used in a while, the Christoph Robin Instant Volume Mist with Rose Water for $39. I have written here that I liked it, but honestly, I have a lot of hair. I have a lot of big hair and sometimes things can add frizz, so. I don't know if I should use this today. Should I try this right now? I feel like I already have a lot of volume, but let's just apply on dry or damp hair, misting the roots and lengths. Shake before use. If I get frizzy after this, although I'm already kind of frizzy because we just had a thunderstorm roll through. Put underneath. Now, if you don't like rose scents, this could be a problem because it definitely smells like a rose water. And I don't know, I feel like too many things smell like rose personally. I just did it underneath one layer and we'll see how this does right now it looks pretty floofy but we'll see how the play develops do i get frizzier let's find out i also got the beauty bakery sour you doing eyeshadow palette now i remember really liking this but kind of being like "Ooh, i'm not really gravitating to these colors right now i have really liked the shade sour to start an eye look i actually did that today super opaque really pretty has a little pink purple undertone to it but it goes really well to start out an eye look and i think that looked really beautiful today with the natasha palette since it's already got that little bit of a purple tone to it i think it looks really good and complements it really nicely i then also went over here into chalk tails to just kind of warm up and give a little bit of a brown tone here and i think it looks pretty nice i don't think it looks too overwhelming I don't think it looks too patchy or anything. So, you know, I've really liked this. Have I reached into a lot of these other shades though? Honestly, no, I've been doing a lot more neutral looks and this definitely has some fun vibrance, but I feel like summer would be a time I would want to pull this out. So now that I've reminded myself, what is the formula like? What's the palette like? I could see myself trying this again pretty soon. And I do believe that is everything for the month of April. Hey friends, editing Nicole here, jumping in very quickly to say this video got a little bit chattier, a little bit longer than I was thinking it would, mostly because I was giving you guys such in-depth thoughts, follow-ups, and reviews on the things that I was still loving, things that I wanted to rediscover, but then also things that just did not cut it for me, and I wanted to explain why things weren't working for me in, you know, particular, but in case something works great for you, it could be different skin types, hair types, all of the things. So. I'm gonna be splitting this into two parts. The next video is going to be covering the following boxes, the May, June, and yes, the July boxes, because I wanted to give you the most information I could as of this point as to how are we feeling about BoxyCharm in 2022. So I really felt like it was important to give you all of that detail, which is why it was a little bit longer. So I'm gonna save the rest for next week. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and click all so you don't miss the follow-ups. What are we thinking? So far and leave me all of your thoughts below. Thank you so much, friends. Bye.